Hey YouTube, uh, today I'd like to do a tutorial about how to use a pilot watch for people who are actually flying on a regular basis or may be interested in learning how to do some pretty basic but important calculations with a pilot watch also known as a E6B. This is not a true E6B, uh, which is a flight computer. E6B is a type of flight computer. This is a slide rule uh, type of device that will allow you to do calculations, multiplication, and division very quickly. So I hope that this video can help those of you who would like to see how you can relate as many things as possible with the least amount of calculations needed. And I could never find anything on YouTube regarding this topic specifically for real world type applications. So I hope that this is something that you can use to further your knowledge and or your skills if you own a watch such as this Citizen Skyhawk here. If you're not familiar with a slide rule and what it does, it is essentially a logarithmic scale of sorts in which uh, you can do calculations very quickly. This type of slide rule that we have on uh, pilot watches today is primarily used for very quick multiplication and division problems. So we'll start with uh, some division and show you how it works. The bezel on the outside of this watch rotates and sometimes uh, on other pilot watches it rotates on the inside and inside of the watch and you have to turn a crown and in order to divide you can see all the numbers here on the watch on the inside for example they count up so you've got 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 and then so on uh, all the way back to 1 or 10 um, and then the same goes for the numbers on the top of the rotating bezel, except that you'll notice the numbers on the top of the bezel are spaced out and the increments in between those numbers all change. And that is based on that logarithmic relationship of the multiplication and division tables uh, that this bezel relates to. So to start off, if we want to divide something, we'll put the number we want divided, uh, the number on the top of the bezel divided by another number. So in this example, you can see 5 and, or 50 and 55, and then you'd have 60 or 5, 5.5, 5, 6. So if we want to divide 12 by 6, 12 over 6, we put 12 over 6 the answer is going to return or show up above the 1 value. In this case, it's 2. 12 divided by 6 is 2. And once you set that scale, this uh, 2 to 1 scale, then everything else around the bezel is in a 2 to 1 relationship. So if we wanted to multiply, for example, 2 times 5, then we're going to get 10. Uh, another example, if we were multiplying, and we wanted to do 4 times 6, then we're going to get 24. So you have to pay attention to uh, your increments. So if we were doing you know, 40 times uh, 6, then we get 240. So you'll pay attention to your decimal places and, and use some pretty you know, common judgment as far as what your return value is going to be as far as decimal place. So the first way that I use this watch is what I like to call minutes mode and any number that returns or is above the 10 placement here is going to be a value in minutes. So you know for example if I have 4 or 40 here that's going to be 4 minutes or 40 minutes uh, depending on uh, the answer that I'm trying to figure out. So 
I'll give you an example and then I'll tell you how I uh, relate the scale to figure out my answer. So let's just say that I'm at 30,000 feet, I'm climbing, air traffic control calls me and says, November 1, 2, 3, 4, can you climb to 35,000 feet in three minutes or less? So we need you there in three minutes or less. The second that they give me the three minutes or less, when I'm in minutes mode, minutes mode, I will stick three minutes over my return value or my return placement, uh, which is that 10 spot. So I'll set three minutes as soon as they say three minutes or less. And knowing that I'm at 30,000 feet and they want me at 35, I need to gain 5,000 feet in three minutes or less. The inside of the bezel, once I set up this relationship, everything is, is locked in uh, in proportion to that three minutes. So when I'm doing calculations in minutes mode, the inside bezel can represent two different things to me. It can represent the speed at which I'm traveling or the speed at which I need to descend. So essentially horizontal or vertical speed. In horizontal, the speed that I'm traveling, uh, it's going to be in nautical miles per minute. That's what this, these numbers on the inside bezel will represent. If I'm doing vertical dis you know, uh, speed or rate of descent, then these numbers are going to represent feet per minute of uh, vertical velocity or, again, vertical speed. The outside bezel can represent either distance in nautical miles or the distance that I need to climb or descend. So in that example, I'm at 30,000 feet. I need to climb 35,000 feet in three minutes or less. I will find the five, which will represent 5,000 feet. That's how much I need to change my altitude in three minutes or less and directly underneath that number is the feet per minute that I need to attain in order to meet the restriction of three minutes or less so in the example 5,000 feet at almost 1700 feet a minute is going to give me three minutes okay I hope that helps okay next I'd like to talk about the inside bezel and horizontal speed or uh, nautical miles per minute. And the way that we figure out nautical miles per minute is we take the speed that we're traveling in knots and divide it by 60. So for example, let's say I'm doing 300 knots, okay? 300 divided by 60 is gonna give me five five nautical miles per minute. So if I do five nautical miles a minute for 60 minutes, I'm gonna travel 300 nautical miles, okay? So nautical miles per minute is going to be on the inside bezel here. Now, it's important that you be able to do that calculation in your head uh, very quickly because it's really just a multiple of six uh, if you can do your multiples of six and maybe even your multiples of three which obviously is half of six you will be able to cut out some of the uh, calculations for the examples I'll be giving you very quickly you'll be able to knock out one of those steps a lot faster so for example let's say I'm in a super fast awesome aircraft and I'm doing 480 knots, then I should know instantly that that's going to be 8 miles a minute because 8 times 6 is 48. So let's say I'm doing 120 knots, then that's 2 miles a minute, 2 nautical miles per minute. So it's important that you know your multiples of 6 and maybe even your multiples of 3. So uh, for example, if I'm doing 330 nautical miles per minute, then it's going to be 5.5. Then if you're not sure, you can always set up that relationship uh, by dividing 330, 300, 310, 320, 330, divided by 60 is 5.5. A 
I thought it would also be really important to point out when we're talking about speed that we're traveling in nautical miles per minute. So if we're doing 300 knots, we're doing uh, five miles a minute. Um, we want to be sure that 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 number that in miles per minute is based on ground speed. If you used indicated airspeed, it would always stay the same. You could set your indicated airspeed for whatever you desire, but your actual true airspeed changes with altitude. As you climb, your true airspeed increases, and as you descend, your true airspeed decreases. On top of that, your ground speed will change if you have a tailwind or a headwind. So say you have a crossing restriction and you're being pushed to that VOR and you're using true airspeed, you're actually going to get there quicker than you have calculated. You need to use ground speed because it is true airspeed corrected for headwinds and tailwinds, which really could get you in trouble if you don't understand which airspeed you're using. You ideally need to be using ground speed in your calculation of nautical miles per minute. So the next main calculation that I do when I have minutes mode set up is uh, figuring out when do I want to start my descent to get to the airport in uh, an appropriate amount of time. So let's say for example I'm at 40,000 feet and uh, we'll just say that we're descending down to sea level so we're going to need to lose 40,000 feet and I want to descend, I want a nice stable descent. I want to descend down at 2,000 feet per minute. I'll go ahead and set up that 40,000 feet and I can quickly find out that it's going to take me 20 minutes to lose 40,000 feet at 2,000 feet per minute. Now, let's say that I don't have the correct page pulled up or the GPS uh, available to me in my, in my time from the airport. How far out maybe do I need to descend if I'm at 40,000 feet and I want to descend at 2,000 feet per minute? Well, if we find how many nautical miles per minute my speed that I'm traveling, so let's say, for example, that I'm traveling uh, 7 miles a minute, 342, excuse me, 420 knots, uh, then I can quickly find out that I need to start descending down 140 nautical miles out. So 140 nautical miles at 7 miles a minute is going to give me a return of 20 minutes, which is proportional and has a direct relationship to my 40,000 feet uh, that I want to lose at 2,000 feet per minute. Okay, so the next way that I use this watch is what I like to call glide slope mode. And the number that is over the 10 or the 1 value is going to be always expressed in hundreds of feet. So in this example, we have set up 300 feet. Now, glide slope, if you're not familiar, is what is known as rise over run. So the rise is how high you are. So either in this example, 300 feet or 3,000 feet or 30,000 feet. The run is how far away you are from something in nautical miles. So it could be one nautical mile, 10 nautical miles, 100 nautical miles. And that is known as your glide slope. So an instrument approach, a standard instrument approach, an ILS, has a three degree glide slope or a rise over run of 300 feet per nautical mile. When we are in glide slope mode, the inside bezel can also represent the speed at which we're traveling across the ground, which is expressed in nautical miles per minute. 
Okay, so if we're doing 360 knots, then we're doing six nautical miles per minute. The outside bezel can also represent our vertical rate or uh, in feet per minute. It will probably become a little more apparent how these all relate if I give you an example. So let's say we're cruising along at 42,000 feet and air traffic control calls up and says November 1, 2, 3, 4, cross XYZ VOR at flight level 180. So we know that we're at 42,000 feet and we need to get down to 18, which means we need to lose 24,000 feet of elevation. The next thing we need to figure out for that crossing restriction is how far away are we from the VOR. Okay, so let's say that we figure out we're 80 nautical miles away. We will go ahead and set up our glide slope to be in glide slope mode. Our rise is going to be 24,000 feet. That's how much altitude we need to lose. And our run is 80 nautical miles, which will give us a glide slope of three degrees in this example. So let's say that we set up the three degree glide slope. Now we need to know in order to meet that crossing restriction, how fast do I need to come down? What is my vertical rate need to be? So if we find our speed that we are traveling across the ground in nautical miles per minute, so let's say we're doing six nautical miles per minute or 360 knots, we would need to descend at 1800 feet per minute in order to meet that crossing restriction okay and probably what I would do is I would bump up that gradient and make it instead of 300 feet per nautical mile I would make it maybe 350 feet per nautical mile which is gonna give me a descent rate at my airspeed of 360 knots of 2100 feet per minute so as a recap, the outside bezel when we're in glide slope mode can represent feet and the inside bezel can represent nautical miles, rise over run. And the outside bezel can also represent feet per minute while the inside bezel can re represent speed in nautical miles per minute. Another benefit to using the glide slope mode is if we want to figure out our descent rate, what's required of us in feet per minute when we're shooting an actual instrument approach. So let's say we're shooting an, an ILS uh, and the ILS is at three degree glide slope, okay, which is a standard, standard ILS. And let's say that we know our final approach speed is 90 knots, which may be a little slow for me, and it may be fast for someone maybe flying a Cessna 172, okay? So we should know that 90 knots is 1.5 nautical miles per minute, all right? Uh, it is uh, a multiple of three, and it's uh, almost a multiple of six. So if we're not sure, we can always do the 90 90 knots over uh, 60 minutes is going to give us 1.5 nautical miles per minute, okay? So let's set back up the 3 degree glide slope for the ILS. We know when we hit the final approach fix, at 1.5 nautical miles per minute, we need to descend at 400 or, yeah, 450 feet per minute, okay? Uh, 450 feet would be our rate of descent once we hit the final approach fix as long as we hold that 90 knots. If our speed increases then so should our rate of descent in order to stay on that 3 degree glide slope. 